Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful day. It's hard to believe it's mid-May. The sun's out, but it's probably 70 degrees, probably more like 68. It's gorgeous. It's perfect temperature. There's a breeze blowing. And today we're going to continue our garden experiment because things in our garden are always an experiment and we're going to dig some potatoes. I'm also doing a personal experiment. I got to go on a girls weekend this weekend with some friends. And of course, while you're waiting around for a restaurant, if there's a Sephora in the neighborhood, you hit up Sephora. So what a better chance to test out the waterproof eyeliner and mascara. <laughs> so we'll see how it does. It may be a sloppy mess by the end of this or maybe I can give it a ringing endorsement. We'll see, but it is kind of nice to look cute again. I I really appreciated that when we went on this girls weekend and I packed all my cute dresses and was able to put on makeup every day. <laughs> so come join us as we try digging up some potatoes. Here's our potato bed and an interloper. I'm glad she just ran off. We're about to try to dig these guys. Like I said, everything here is an experiment. I planted these really early. In fact, so early that our, our really hard frost that we had the last kind of late in the season one did some pretty good damage on the leaves, but they had been in long enough that they just put up greens again and just kept right on trucking. But the things we're supposed to look out for were setting blooms and then the blooms dropping off. The blooms dropping off and then the vines starting to fall over and yellow. Something else I saw um, with the LSU ag was that you might see fissures in the ground. The thing is this soil is so soft I don't think we're gonna see any fissures in the ground. We're going to dig by fork and by hand. Silly chick. All right, what you finding down there? A potato. Ah, look at that! <laughs> Show me, Molly. I'm trying to pull it up. Got it. <laughs> oh, oh, it's baby. a cute teeny one. It's a cute baby potato. <laughs> There's a more Dig in there with your hands. Dig, dig, dig! Oh, is this? That's the berry. There you go. Pull the plant. Okay, let's see. I'm pretty good at digging like a Look, look right here. <laughs> gentle, gentle, gentle Molly, you're pulling the, the skin off. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Very cute, tiny little potato. Now, we may have to make a decision about whether we actually continue digging or not. If we end up with only teeny tinies, oh. If we end up with only teeny tinies, then we may need to let them grow for a little longer. We'll see. Oh, wait, look. Here's some more. Okay, they're only little, though. That's okay. They can be new potatoes. They'll still be yummy.
So this is what we got off one plant. Now, now that I look at it, it's not terrible. I mean, the seed potatoes were about that size. So now I've got to make the decision whether I want to continue to dig them, because um, we'll just use them like new, new potatoes, or not, if we want to keep letting them grow. Maybe if we dig about half and leave the others to grow, maybe we'll give that a shot. In the spirit of being real, look at this makeup, guys. I wish I could give a resounding endorsement, but um, no, no. I don't think that's waterproof, do you? Mm-mm. Oh dear. So this is what we've gotten from this. And that's probably three seed potatoes worth of plants. So when you consider the multiplication, it's really not bad at all. And those are lovely potatoes. Those will be delicious. So they're not baker size, but I'm really happy with them. Those will be really good roasted with our chickens. And my mom and dad are coming on Monday. So I'm planning to pull out and thaw a chicken and cook some potatoes, and I can cook potatoes that came from our garden, and that's pretty thinking cool.
So my little helper, oop, watch out for the netting, is going to get the potato vines that we dug out and she's taking them to the compost pile. Good job. You've got it. Pull hard. Nicely done, ma'am. Okay, get it. Beautiful. We're not we're not feeding these to our goats, and do you know why? Why? Because they're poisonous. Poisonous? Yeah. Potato tops and tomato tops are poisonous. They just are, baby. There's something in them that makes people or animals sick. So, we did half the bed, and here's our potato harvest. Yep. Not bad, considering that was probably Wait, one, two, three, four, probably five potatoes, seed potatoes. So, that's pretty awesome. The Daddy, reason... we can use it for chicken! Yes, we'll roast it with a chicken, and it'll be yummy. Mm. The reason I decided not to dig those out is because I had some of these when I pulled them that had so many teeny tiny, yeah. You see around the top of that seed potato? Mm, focus. Still focusing on the wrong thing. One second. Wow. See if I can help it out a little bit. Okay, I am no pro at this, and it is becoming very obvious. Is that all? Or is there a little bit there? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know if you can see those teeny... There we go. Dorothy, wait, wait. Those teeny tiny seed potatoes. Sprouts at the top. Those would have turned into big seed potatoes. So, Aww. um, that's why I decided to leave them alone. Quick garden update now that we're done digging. I've got two Sweet 100 cherry tomatoes planted here. I sent off? several off to a friend because I didn't want as much of the cherry tomatoes this year as I had last year. And I had several really, really happy seedlings that needed to go somewhere. Cilantro is bolting like crazy. I went ahead and pulled out my bolted kale and my bolted chard and I gave it to the goats. No. Um, so the cilantro probably won't be far behind. I have planted out some radishes over here. Funny little volunteer strawberry. And the thyme is starting to recover from the fact that I pulled all the <laughs> tons and tons of kale around it. And all of a sudden it's getting way more sun than it's been used to. The purple carrots are looking good. Mom! You're on camera. Is there something you need? I don't know where he is, buddy. Go play. Okay, we'll keep looking then. Our volunteer sunflowers are looking pretty happy and I'm just letting them be. They can be where they are. One thing I have found about this netting, the netting is a necessary thing, but y'all, it's driving me crazy because we're tripping over it in the aisles all the time. And my vining things are choking up in it instead of climbing up the trellis. So I'm really not sure what to do. I have to have netting to keep the chickens out or everything will be destroyed. <sighs> Sad. Over here, the tomatoes are looking so happy. In fact, I need to get some posts today and I need to start a Florida weeb support. I'm giving that a shot this year. I'm keeping these guys nipped down. I'm making sure every time I see, um, every time I see suckers showing up that I'm pruning them out. I did this just yesterday, but uh, that's not really a sucker, but a sucker would be right here in this, this crotch of the stem. And I already pulled them out. We may find one while we're looking. I've been pruning off the suckers, and I haven't been letting them bloom just yet. I'm about to let them keep blooms, though, because these vines have gotten really robust. And the Florida weed that I'm going to try, I will put stakes between every few plants, and then I'm going to weave twine back and forth between the plants to support them and then you just kind of add height to it as they grow higher 
I just pruned up my basil this morning because Jess on Roots and Refuge reminded me that I needed to. And you come in with basil and you pinch off at the top between two stalks because what'll happen is it'll bush out and it'll get thicker and what you're gonna make your plant healthier and more sturdy as you do that. So I bundled all that up and it is hanging in my kitchen smelling amazing. The nasturtium is super happy which I'm thrilled about because I thought I lost all of it when I had it out before our freeze. I moved these guys. I had way too tightly seeded. This is strawberry spinach. It's actually a plant. You can use the young leaves like spinach and then it makes little red berries on it too that you can use as well. So I can't wait to see how that turns out. Cucumbers, not doing so hot this year. I really don't know why. I only had two that came up from seed, so I've reseeded. And I have yet to see the new ones come up. It's a little concerning. I may end up having to buy cucumbers. Cucumber seedlings, oh goodness, not cucumbers. Seedlings to plant. The mint is happy as a clam. That's something else I need to harvest and hang up to dry because it'll just keep producing and producing. And I love peppermint tea. And this one at the back is bee balm. And over here, oh my goodness, this makes me so happy. That's chamomile. Do you see it? I'm gonna zoom you in. That's chamomile, light chamomile tea chamomile. So as it starts to put on more blooms, I'm gonna save those two and dry them for tea. Super stinking exciting. Our wicking pot tomatoes are looking awesome. And I'm curious to see whether I can tell the difference between our wicking pot ones and our regular bed ones. I do think they're taller, just looking. My son is still looking for dad, he's still yelling, if you can hear him in the background. Um, down here, right behind my roses, that's a loofah. The loofahs are kind of limping along. There's another one here. Wait, that's my ground cherry, where's the loofah? No, that's it. That's the loop right there. I'm really hoping those make because I have grand plans of goat milk soap in loofah slices. We'll see if it comes to fruition. More wicking pots. Just coming around, I wanted to show you these. These are the ground cherries. And I noticed the other day, <gasps> yep, you see that? Bloom, we have a bloom. Oh, and we have buds too. So we may get in some ground cherry soon and I'll be learning how to use those, which is exciting. I've been trying to figure out ways to get more fruit out here. Yep, definitely need supporting soon. Over here in the green stalk, I did finally get my strawberry starts in, but I've gotta admit I was disappointed. Um, I thought I had ordered enough to fill the entire green stalk. In fact, I'm sure I calculated. For that and when the order arrived it was 10 starts actually it was 11 they I had added an extra one in there um i need more than that to fill this and i know i had calculated to fill this and i went back and looked at my order and it matched what came so i'm really don't know what happened unfortunately though you can see i have one two uh three that have died that one looks like it's working on dying so it's kind of mixed bag results too. I mean, some of them look incredibly happy and then some of them just completely petered out. So I have to say I wasn't super thrilled with how that went next year, I guess. I'll have to order some more because we're kind of past season. Hopefully these guys will grow and they are ever bearing. So hopefully we'll see some fruit at some time. I have been, at this point, I've been pinching off the blossoms. So I haven't been letting it bloom just yet. Let's come around. You've seen the potato bed. We spent a lot of time on the potato bed. The cabbages are looking lovely. We have had an incredibly mild spring. And I have high hopes that I'll actually have heads. Like if you look on this one, that's heading. And the, the variety on this is Cour de Bull, I think is how you'd say it. So like bull heart. So they're a little bit of an oblong shape of a head and I think it's taking on that shape. The zucchini is off like a shot. 
In fact, I think I see blooms on it. Squash is going a little more slowly. And I made the mistake of tucking some back under this cabbage, thinking, well, I'll cut the cabbage out and then the squash can take over, but I, I think it's just gonna get choked. I'll probably just have to plant a second round if we're not devastated by vine borers because vine borers are my nemesis in the garden with squash. And I love my squash. The onions are another thing that's kind of, mm, again, like I said, try and be honest with y'all. They're thick down at the bottom, but they're not bulbing. You see that? It starts to curve down right away, right there. Um, I cut off the blossoms and the, the scapes that were there dehydrated those and ground them up to make a nice onion powder and it's really delicious it works beautifully i've never opened up a jar of, of onion powder and it been so uh, aromatic and i do love that so that may just be what ends up happening you kind of adapt and use it as you can so if these don't bulb up in the next week probably i'll just pull them up and i'll grind them up and we'll use them as onion powder and that won't be the end of the world it'll be just fine the chard is super duper happy and I love this chard because this is called Bright Lights. This is called Bright Lights chard. And this is why we got these lovely colorful stems on it. Some are red, some are yellow, some are green. And it just looks so beautiful in your bowl when you slice it up, whether you cook it or you eat it like salad green. Over here, this is exciting. We have some asparagus coming up. I wasn't really sure we were going to. Um, some of the crowns just look straight dead. And I, I think some of them were because I'm not seeing everything coming up that I planted. But these little wisps are starting to come up. And asparagus is one of those patience plants. We won't be able to harvest anything off of it this year. I don't think any next year. <laughs> But it keeps coming back and after that point, you can harvest. So, we'll see. Asparagus is in here, zinnias. These are zinnias. They're starting to look bigger and happier, a little more sturdy. A little less I have, like I have to worry about chickens knocking them over. The strawberry spinach I have transplanted in here is looking really pretty too. Probably happier than in the other bed. And over here, I'm sorry about the yelling of my children in the background. My house is never quiet. It looks like my pepper plants survived. This end one and this end one got scratched out by chickens. The one in the middle has been in since I transplanted it. So you can kind of see the difference in happiness between them. But these were the Lystra sweet peppers that are supposed to be kind of fruity sweet. Right here, this is an experiment, this isn't everything. Rhubarb. How cool is that? We got rhubarb, we got some calendula babies. They don't seem to be making a ton of progress, but they are starting to put on more leaves. So fingers crossed. Here we have our eggplant and our constant problem, the flea beetle. Let's see if I can zoom you in to see a flea beetle. Okay, you see the little bitty black dot on that leaf. That is a flea beetle. And it's called that because, watch. No, you're not gonna cooperate. You're actually being still enough that I probably could smush you. They jump like fleas and they're almost impossible to smush. And what they do is they make lace work of all the leaves on my eggplants. I don't know why. They love them, they do it with every single one. This is the healthiest eggplant I've got and it's a lace work. So I need to go mix up some more insecticidal soap and spray these poor things down. But that should catch you up on what's happening out here in the garden. So on goat updates, the littlest babies. I uh, have my heart. The one on the right is Guinevere and the one on the left is Nimue. Nim and Gwen for short. And they're absolutely stunning. And I could not be happier that they're does. They're doing beautifully. They're growing up. And over here, Chuck and Logan. Are looking good and sturdy, aren't you, boys? There's Chuck and Logan and Miss Poppy. And I'm strongly considering 
once Chuck and Logan go to their new home, I'm strongly considering letting Miss Poppy go as a doe in milk because she's just, she's very much low man on the totem pole, kind of like her mama. The problem is, Miss Bees is over here. Yes, I'm talking about you, is the queen, and everybody else is bloodline related to her. And she cares. She totally cares. But look at her. Today is supposed to be her due date. Did you know that, Miss Press? Today is your due date. Look at that tum. Yeah, the light and dark is having a hard time focusing on it. Her tummy's huge. And her udder is filling out. Oh yeah, her udder's filling out nicely. Again, the light's having a hard time. Girl, are you ready to get rid of these babies? You ready to deliver babies? I haven't checked her ligaments today. I checked them yesterday. They were softening, but they were still there. So we'll see. And here, oh, uh, there you are. Here's Isabel. She's growing up so beautiful. And her brother, again, he's in the shadow. He's not showing great. Say, hey, Hugo. Y'all, he's turning into such a hunk. Aren't you, buddy? You turn into a beefcake of a boy. It's so funny how different the builds are on a little buckling and a little doling. He is so square. I love it. And he's going to be going with Chuck and Logan to a new home in just a couple weeks. And that's going to be super exciting. And then my job's going to get harder because I'm going to go from milking mornings only on Miss Stormia and Poppy if I don't sell her. Again, thinking of selling her as a doe in milk. She milks beautifully by hand or by machine and she's just not fitting in with the herd bless her she is loud that is one thing aren't you dear so i am i let my voice be heard i let everyone know what i'm thinking but i'll have to go to milking them twice a day because they won't have babies on them during the day oh and look misty's such a good mama you are you're such a good mama and Misty will start milking on Sunday, right? We'll start milking Sunday. And that's Bayorn. Apologies, he wants my full attention. I'm slowly transitioning him to mostly outside dog and he doesn't like it very much. Do you? You're mad at me. Ooh, I feel little goat feet on the back of my leg. Hi, Isabel. So there's our goat update. We're just on baby watch with Beezus, and that will be the last of the kidding for this year. Kidding 2021. Good girl. Yeah, you ready to get rid of those babies. Oh, goodness, Bayorn. Leave the poor mama be. Sweet girl. Thank you for hanging out with us today. We've had a lot of fun digging up half of our potato bed. I'm really excited to see what the rest of it yields if we leave it in to grow a little longer because my total... <laughs> My total on that potato bed, I stuck it on my kitchen scale when I went inside and it was nine pounds of potatoes. So that's pretty exciting. And I would say the makeup, mm, not completely waterproof, but it's better than my other was. So I'm going to continue rocking the wing liner and if it runs a little bit, then so be it. Um, we updated on the garden, looked around, we've got a lot of stuff going on and now um, we're just on baby watch with Beezus and she'll be our last kid of the season. So that's exciting. I hope you'll have a great week. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, Bye.